Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today I'm going to overload your senses with a brand new game engine that is brand new to the channel, not brand new to the world because it's actually been in development for a number of years now. It's called Overload, thus the horrible pun, and it is a 3D game engine with a full editing environment, open source, written using C++, and your game logic is done using the Lua programming language. On top of that, there is a full demo game available for it, which I very much love because it gives you the ability to go hands-on with it right away. So get back to some of the details about this guy in just a second, but first we're going to go ahead and load it up. Now it does come with releases only for Windows platform. I don't know if it can be built on other environments, uh, but the Windows binaries are available under releases. We're going to go ahead and grab the cargo demo and I'll go ahead and open that up. So here we are in the primary editing environment. You've got your typical view navigation over here. You have your scene graph over here. Down here you have your variety of different assets that make up your project. So for example here, asset I have a variety of scenes available, so I could come in here, scene, and pick um, the game scene, which is our primary scene. We'll, we'll show this in action in just a second. At the same time, there are like menu scenes, like so, and so on. So again, back to game scene. It's all pretty quick and uh, good performance going on there as well. Another thing we can do is come on up here. I'm going to go ahead and show up the asset view, and then go here in models. You've got a variety of different models available, and I could go here and say, okay, preview of the model. We can look at the model in the editor as well. So again, back here to the scene view. Uh, this is our game setup. So you see here the world we're dealing with, uh, and then go over here, and so on. So the clean navigation uh, in terms of uh, authoring things in the world to move things around, select them, your typical widgets, very straightforward movement. Now, one downside I've actually found with Overload so far is it does not seem to do well with high DPI. I had to drop down to uh, 1080p to make this legible at all. So one of those things you want to be aware of, and hopefully the creators can add some kind of a DPI scaling to this at some point in the future. So there is your um, game environment. Now, what we can actually do, let's go down here, and I'm going to showcase something. So this is uh, a platform, a, a pressure sensor trigger right here. So there's actually two parts to it. So the gate enigma trigger, the trigger, and then the mesh. So the trigger here, you're going to notice down here, it has a script attached to it. So you can attach, so this is the gameplay enigma door trigger script. Uh, come over here. Let's go close that out. Come down here to scripts and you will find a gameplay door trigger right here. So here is your script. Let's go ahead and open that one up. And here you can see. So this is your typical Lua implementation. So it's pretty straightforward how the game logic works. The good news is we've actually got decent documentation as well. Uh, so I will show you that a little bit later on. But as you can see here, you're dealing with a variety of different callbacks. So you've got the on start callback. Uh, so when your code first executes, you do this logic right here. You can see how you can query into the scenes. So get current scene and you can find name actor. So find actor by name like so. And then you can get attached behaviors to those things easily enough. Update called every frame on trigger event. It's called when it actually is triggered by the player. Uh, and here you can see like, for example, there's how you would play a sound in the world. Pretty straightforward, easy to understand code. I do appreciate the, the simplicity of it. So that is the, um, the way that scripting is actually handled. So again, all using Lua. And then you just attach it to uh, your objects in the world. So over here, you can just attach a component or you can add a script in. Variety of different components available in the world. Uh, you can also create them this way. So you can create various different primitives, uh, physics objects, lights, audio sources and other stuff here as well. And of course you can attach your scripts to things. Uh, you can actually attach multiple scripts. They will show up as multiple different objects here. Um, so that is your uh, world editing environment. Let's go ahead and we'll just click right here and this will give you a game preview. So here we are inside of our game. It's got some post-processing going on. Uh, I can't run yet, so here we are just we'll walk through. Uh, it does have profiling details available as well. So if you need to debug your code. So here we go run around in our world, this door automatically opens, and there is our trigger. So we go on back here, so there you see, triggers opens up, but classic physics problem thing. Again, I love that it comes with this demo to get you up and going. So we'll pick that up, we'll drag this over here, and then we will drop it here. And their demo is gonna end soon because there's this energy picker up over here. And you pick this energy up like so. And then I think I need to throw it at the, that thing, but when I did it last time, I missed. It's really only one. Oh, oh, I got it this time. All right, there you go. So then this thing comes up, 
Again, all scripted. Everything that you need to know is shown here so you can figure out how things work. Uh, I, again, I love when they have um, demo projects like this. It's, it makes it so simple for you to get up and going, uh, especially for these relatively unknown engines. So I need to find that key. I don't actually know where it is. I'm not going to find it. So that'll be the end of our hands-on portion. But it gives you an idea of what uh, everything looks like, how things work. You do have, again, profiler available. Shows you how fast things are going, how things are performing. Uh, you do have support for a variety of different assets. It uses as imp behind the scenes, so the asset importer open source. Um, the only real complaint I would have so far from what I've seen from it is that lack of uh, DPI support. Again, you have a variety of windows available here as well. So uh, your material editor is down here. So let's go ahead and pick a material. So edit there, you see it opens up in the asset view, and then you have your options available over here. Uh, it is fairly robust in terms of what it actually offers. So now we're going to head on over to the website that's available right here. So if you're interested in checking this one out, it is available at overload, so O-V-E-R, L-O-A-D, engine.org. Uh, there's not much on the website, but you click this, it will bring you to the demo game we just checked out. Uh, in terms of this project itself, as I mentioned earlier on, this one is open source. It's under the MIT license, which is a very liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. The source code is primarily C++. There's some C in there as well, so C and C++ based. Uh, the releases, sadly, the only release that they have right now is this one. Uh, so this is a fairly recent release, uh, but it's only got a binary for Windows. So again, I don't know if this is a Windows only engine at this point in time. In terms of development, you can see the license was first created six years ago. So this has been under development for quite a while, uh, but it is getting constant updates. There are branches of you know various different development branches going on down here as well. Uh, in terms of contributors, 16, that's not bad at all. By the way, if you do like what you see here, even if you're never going to use it, just come on in, give them a star. They always appreciate that and it's free for you. Uh, and then yeah, so that's it. Overload is a free open source 3D game engine made in C++ with Lua as its primary scripting language. This was originally created in 2019 by those three fellows uh, as a grad project and has since evolved into a community-driven initiative supported by dozens of contributors. Um, ease of use, it's documented community, and it uses C++20 for your code base in terms of features. It's got Lua scripting, a game editor, PBR uh, rendering. Uh, I know that R was redundant there. Uh, custom shader support, Windows game building, profiling tools, material editor, spatial audio support, rigid physics, and more to come. Uh, you can get an idea of how it works. It's broken down into, uh, there's two executables. One is for the game, one is for the editor. The editor is what we saw in action. Uh, and then 10 libraries available for it as well. Those libraries you can see are broken down here. So you got things like hardware profiling and debugging tools in there as well, which is nice. Uh, so that is kind of the gist of it. Um, and yeah, so a variety of dependencies available uh, like that it works on as well. Things like, again, asset importer, uh, bullet physics, uh, Clang, and so on. Probably a lot of projects you've probably already heard of. Details on how to get up and started. Now, where this is an impressive engine is, again, a lot of times with these open source projects, the, the documentation is pretty awful. And at first glance, it looks like this documentation is very minimal as well. So you look here, it's like, oh, yeah, tutorials or scripting. No, when you actually break it down, so let's go here to the tutorials, and you get an idea of what you've got. So here, let's do getting started. And here is getting started. So getting started has like literally documentation of the entire window process and then gets you through like starting to create materials and objects in the world and so on. So there is a ton of documentation available for this guy. So each one of these little windows has a breakdown. So that was there building your own game. Again, fully documented here as well. And then when you get into the scripting side of things, you've got uh, full reference documentation here uh, and everything you need to know to get up and going. I'm always impressed with open source projects that have good documentation. So I got to applaud overload on that one. And then the other aspect again is there's this overload cargo demo which is wonderful. So if you want to get up and going with the guy really easy, really quickly, what you do is come on in here uh, to the, the GitHub repository, go to the releases right here, and then just download the uh, this guy right there, and then extract that out, and then clone this repository, the cargo demo, and then just open it from the launcher, and you're good to go. Everything we saw today, you can check out there. And it looks like they keep the demo up to date with the current version. So this was the most current release was the 1.4 release candidate one, and this has been updated when that release came out. So it gives you a great starting point, and it also breaks down everything you need to know to get started with Overload Engine. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Overload. I, I love doing these more obscure game edges, but let me know what you think. Again, my only real complaint, and when this is my only complaint, that's pretty solid, 
is the lack of high DPI support. That's kind of a, a deal breaker for a lot of engines these days. More people are using high DPI displays. Even on my laptop screen, you know, its default is very high and then it uses some kind of a scaling to do so. So hopefully that gets addressed uh, at some point in the future. But other than that, a very impressive engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Uh, goodbye.